Hey everybody, uh, Mr. Hartzer here, and I want to talk to you a little bit about some statistics. A lot of my students have had some issues with this. I did a Zoom meeting this morning with some of them, and there were a lot of questions. So I just kind of want to go over this and answer some of these questions. I'm using Zoom to record this, and I'm using a little stylus with a drawing tablet. So hopefully this goes all right. And there, you should be able to see my screen now, and you should see my face in the corner. Hopefully this will be fun. We'll see what happens here. So I need to annotate. All right. So let's start off with number one. So Beth and Shana each purchase one raffle ticket. If a total of 11 raffle tickets are sold and two winners will be selected, what is the probability that Beth and Shana win? So let's first look at the probability of Beth winning. So there are two winning tickets or two winners and 11 total tickets. So Beth's probability of winning is two over 11. But now let's look at Shana. And Shana's gonna be green. And now Beth has already had her ticket drawn. She's already won. So now there's only one winning ticket left. And there are 10 tickets still out there in the world. So that's the probability of each of them. Now, because there is an and in the middle, that means both of these things have to happen. And that means we are multiplying them. So my total answer is 2 over 110, which simplifies to 1 over 55. All right. So that is number one. Let's move on to number two. And I got to drag my face out of the way. Okay. Now we're over here at number two. I'm going to change black to a black pen. All right. A meeting takes place between a diplomat and 14 government officials. However, four of those government officials are actually spies. So that's exciting. If the diplomat gives secret information to 10 of the attendees at random, what's the probability that no secret information was given to a spy? All right, so we're gonna have a top and a bottom here. The bottom is going to be just, what are the chances that, uh, or what are the uh, different options, the total number of options for uh, group size? So this is where we get into the combinatorics here. There's combinations and permutations. Combinations, their order does not matter. Permutations, order does matter. So a combination lock should actually be called a permutation lock because the order matters, right? If my password is one, two, three, I can't just do three, two, one, and that won't get me the right answer, right? It won't unlock the lock. So that should help you do that there. Combination locks are actually permutation locks. So it's combination because order does not matter. I'm just giving it to 10 people. It doesn't matter if um, Billy is on my left and Angelica is on my right, or if Angelica is on my left and Billy is on my right, doesn't matter. So I have 14 diplomats. I have to choose 10 of them. 14, choose 10. We're not going to get into the, all the factorials of combinations. We're literally just going to punch that stuff into a calculator. So keep that simple right now. That's the total number of options, but now I have to be specific, right? I want to have, uh, no spies in this particular group. So I have four spies. I need to choose zero of them. So there's actually only one way to pick zero people out of a group of four, right? I just don't pick any of them. And I believe 14 choose 10 is 1001. We're going to add a tab real quick. Is it not gonna let me add a tab? Oh, I need to click mouse. Add a tab. It's still not let me add a tab. What's this about? All right, there we go. 14, choose 10 is 101. Awesome. Got that right. Oop, wrong tab. Here we go. F11 to full screen it. Awesome. That is it for that one. That is our final answer. I'm going to delete all of this now and we're going to scroll. All right, and I'm gonna drag my face away again. Okay, so now we are doing number three. A fair coin is flipped 10 times. What's the probability of the coin landing heads up exactly six times? So this is where we get into Bernoulli. Bernoulli, I do not think I spelled that right, but it's Bernoulli trials. There's a U here, Bernoulli trials. Close enough, right? So what are the, we're gonna call a success to be landing heads up. So what is the probability of success? Well, 
we're going to assume that it can't land on the edge of the coin. That we all know it can, but we're going to say that it can't. Probability of success or heads is 50%. Probability of failure or tails is 50%. Now, what are the different possibilities, right? I want my coin to land heads exactly six times, but it doesn't matter what order that's in, right? So that's where we have combinations still, not permutations. So I have 10 flips. I need to choose six of them to be heads. Then this is where Bernoulli's stuff comes in handy. This is the probability of heads, so 50%. And then the number of times I have heads, which is six. But then I also have, and these are all being multiplied here, then there's the probability that I land on tails. And how many times am I gonna land on tails? Well, it's, uh, it's going to be, uh, let's see, four times. If I land on head six and I flipped it 10 times, well, I have to be on tails four of those times. So we're not gonna punch all that into the calculator, but you can get the number there, okay? Just a cute little number, awesome. A uh, six-sided die is roll was a probability that the die will show an even number exactly two times. This one's similar, right? Uh, we have probability of success. Well, that's now an even number. And let's see, a die has six sides and two, four, and six. So half of them are even. So we actually have a very similar setup to last time, right? Of, and I'm just going to write odd here instead of failure. It's still 50%. You roll a die six times, so it's six, choose, it should be a C, and uh, exactly two times, so six, choose two. 50% of the time we're successful, we want that to happen exactly twice, and 50% we fail, and that's, we're allowed to fail four times. That's the setup for this one, folks, and then again, I'm gonna let you punch that all into Google or a calculator or whatever you have to find out the, um, the exact answer for that. Let's save this page. We're going to clear everything. And then I'm going to scroll. All right. Down here gets interesting again. We'll switch up the color. I've been using black this whole time. All right. A test consists of nine true false questions. A student who forgot to study guesses randomly on every question. What is the probability that the student gets at least, at least two questions right? This is where things can become kind of tricky, all right? So I want the probability that at least two right. Well, that's the same as the probability of getting two questions right, plus the probability of getting three right, plus four, plus, you gotta get the pattern here, right? Until we get to probability of getting eight of them right, and the probability of getting nine of them right. So it's kind of a lot of things, right? At least two questions correct means they could have also gotten nine correct. So that's the part that a lot of people have issues with. So there's another way of doing this, and it's probably the easier one. Let's, instead of finding the probability of getting two right and three right and four right and so on, why don't we find the probability, I'm gonna change the color actually, probability of getting one of them right. So the probability of getting at least two is equal to 100% minus the probability of getting less than two. That's kind of cool, right? I mean, the probability of getting more than two or equal to two, right? At least two. So probably getting two or more is going to be equal to 100% minus probably getting less than that. So getting zero right or one of them right. So this is the way I'm going to do it. So I'm gonna take 100% or just a one, subtract the probability of getting zero questions right, and subtract the probability of getting one question right. Okay, I know it's kind of tricky, but these two are the exact same thing. That's the exciting thing about this. Okay, now I'm gonna change my color one more time. One minus, what's the probability of getting zero questions right? Oh, that should be a minus. Okay, so that is, I have nine questions. I'm going to choose zero of them to be correct. What's the probability of getting it correct? Well, that's 
50%, right? It's a true false question. I get it right zero times. Probability of failure, right? Because Bernoulli is all about true, false, right, wrong, uh, success, failure. So there's a 50% chance of getting it wrong, and that happens all nine times. So this right here, this whole thing, this is the probability, probability of getting zero questions right. Now I'm gonna come over here, I'm gonna switch the colors up just a little bit to help us define these things. Now I'm also going to subtract, it's a little too light, let's go blue again. I'm gonna subtract the probability of getting one answer correct. So nine, choose one. I'm using combination still, because it doesn't matter. It could be the first question or the third or the ninth. It doesn't matter what order my questions are in, right? I just wanna get one correct. Probability of success is still 50%. Happens one time times probability of failure. How many times do I fail? Well, if I got right once, I'm wrong eight times if the total number is nine, right? So my exponents here should always add up to be that front number before the choose, okay? So I'm not, again, I'm not gonna go through and type all into the calculator, but you can literally type into Google, nine choose zero or nine choose one. It's awesome. Google is amazing. Just don't forget this little one over here, right? It's 100% minus this, minus this. All right, cool. Hopefully that was helpful for you. Let's save this as a photo and clear everything. Drag my face over here. Let's read this one. A basketball player has a 50% chance of making each free throw. What is the probability that the player makes at least 11 out of 12 free throws? So this one is going to be a little bit different, right? The last one was at least two. So it could be two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This one, it's either he makes 11 or 12 of them. Way easier to just actually calculate this instead of subtracting it from anything. So the probability of getting at least 11 out of 12, that equals the probability of getting 11 plus the probability of getting 12. Hopefully you're with me on that part. Now let's find out the probability of getting 11 of them right. Well, I have 12 free throws. I want to choose 11 of them, right? And these just mean that maybe I missed the first one or the second or the third or the fifth or whatever, right? Somewhere in there. There's a bunch of options for that to happen. So I have to calculate or have that be a part of the situation. So all of the different um, patterns that could happen, and then I have to multiply that by the probability of success. So it's a 50% chance of success. How many times do you succeed? 11, that comes from this second number here, times the probability of failure. So again, first number is 12 minus, minus this 11 is going to get me a one. So this total piece is the probability of getting 11 free throws. We have to add that to the probability of getting 12 free throws, which is going to be 12 free throws. Let's choose all 12 of them to be successful. 50% success rate happens 12 times. 50% failure rate happens zero times. Keep in mind here, 12, choosing 12, there's only one way for me to pick all 12 numbers. Okay, that's kind of cool. There's 12 ways to pick 11 of those numbers to be successes. So that's kind of fun. All right, so all of this is a probability of getting all 12 shots. Adding up both of these things, and we have our number, which is our final answer. So hopefully that is helpful for you. Uh, again, that was number six. And let us keep going. As I said, I'm not going to go through and actually type in all of these numbers and find the exact answers for you. I'm pretty sure I can trust you to look at some things in the old Google search engine. So now let us do this one. Number seven. Technician is launching fireworks near the end of a show. Of the remaining 14 fireworks, nine are blue. Five are red. If she launches six of them in a random order, what is the probability that exactly four 
of them are blue ones. Okay, so uh, let's look at this carefully. Nine, oh, she's choosing how many? 14 total. All right, there's 14 total. There are six being launched. And there are nine blue, five red. Okay, she launches six of them in a random order. So again, not permutation, combination. What's the probability exactly four of them are blue ones? So first I have 14 of them that I could choose from. I'm choosing six. Now my numerator is going to be how many different possibilities do I have for picking the blue ones, right? I have nine uh, different blue ones. I need to choose exactly four of them. So there is that little chunk. And hold on one second here. Okay, sorry about that. I uh, had a little thing I had to fix. All right, so uh, my screen got a little bit erased in that too, but we have 14. We're choosing six of them total to be launched, right? That's my total possibilities. I'm going to write that here. Total possibilities. There's a lot of letters there. All right, now we need to look at some of this a little more specifically, right? We want to choose exactly four of them to be blue, and there's nine already. So there are nine of these blue fireworks. I want to choose exactly four of them. And if there's four of them that are blue, well, then there must be two of them that aren't. And there are five reds. So five of the red ones, I need to choose two of them. That is going to be your total results, right? This top piece is the specific case, right? Total goes on bottom, specific cases goes on top. So I have exactly four blue. And that means that there are two red ones. All right, that is number seven. Now let's look over here at number eight. I gotta slide my face out of the way again. There we go. All right, let me you slide up my little user bar up here too. So I have a jar that contains 10 black buttons, six brown buttons, nine buttons are picked at random. What's the probability exactly five of them are black? Okay. So how many buttons? 10 black buttons, six brown. 10 black, six brown. And I'm choosing nine of them. Okay, so again, total goes on bottom. I have a total of 16 buttons. I have to choose nine of them. Now let's look at the specific case, right? I want exactly five of them to be black. So I have 10 options. I need to choose five of them. Well, if I have five of those, I have to have some of the brown ones, right? So if I have five, I'm picking a total of nine. So I have uh, six to choose from for brown, and I need four more of them because that gives me a total of nine. This five plus this four gets me the total of nine. And the 10 and the six, those are the total numbers for each of those respective colors. So again, this, plug all of that into the old interweb, and I get my percent or my number. So another helpful piece right there. Let's save this image. Let us clear all my drawings and let us, oh, I gotta change it to a mouse instead of a drawing. So I'm just drawing on my little scrolly bar. All righty, almost done folks. I know it's gonna be a long video, but at least you'll have an example for all of these things. You're dealing five cards from a standard shuffled deck. Note that a standard deck is 52 cards and four of those are kings. What's the probability that you'll have at most three kings? So. At most, oh, I need to change back to drawing. At most, three kings. That means that uh, probability of at most three kings, that equals the probability of one king plus the probability of two kings plus the probability of three kings. So 
at most three. I can't have four, right? But I can have one. One is at most, right? So it's less than three. So now I have to find what's the probability of getting one king? Probability of getting one king is uh, 50. Oh, sorry, is uh, one. Sorry. Oh, okay. Let's, I'm going to erase these pieces here. All right. Probably getting one king is four, choose one. But remember, I have to have five cards in my hand. That was written up here. Five cards in a standard shuffle. I'm being dealt five cards. So I have four kings. I'm choosing one of them. And I have uh, 50, and I have 48 other cards. I have 48 other cards that are not kings. I'm going to choose four of them, okay? This chunk here is the probability of pulling out one king. Okay, that's for this whole little piece here. There we go. Now we're gonna switch up the color a little bit and do the probability of getting two kings. So I'm gonna add that to four kings. I'm choosing two of them times I have 48 other cards. I have to choose three. Again, I want a total of five, so I've picked two kings and three other cards, and that gets me the total probability of having two of them to be kings. And we'll change colors one more time, and I have to add the probability of picking three of those kings, if there are four total, times there are 48 other cards, and I have to choose only two of them this time. All of that is being divided by my total options. My total options is 52 cards, and I'm picking five of them, right? So I've got a, I'm dealt a hand of five. Punch all that into your old calculadora, and boom, done. Uh, and again, this can be actually typed in from your calculator. You don't even have to have uh, your Chromebook or a laptop or anything. It is under the math button and then you go to probability. I believe it's called probability, not statistics. And it's P-R-O-B for probability. And then scroll down to, it should be N-C-R. So a Napoleon, um, C, what's a cat, and then R for uh, Roberto. So N-C-R, or uh, total number of options, choosing a specific number of them. All right, I saved this one. Let's clear our drawings. And now we're going to do number 10. I believe this is our last one. So we have a bag of six real diamonds, five fakes. If six diamonds are picked from a bag at random, what's the probability that at most four of them are real? So that means that there's one of them real, plus the probability that two of them are real, and three and four. Okay. Um, ba, 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 ba. Okay. This is equal to 100% minus the probability that five of them are real, minus the probability that all six of them are real. So I hope this makes sense to you, but let us do a little tweak and maybe you can see why. The probability of getting one real one plus two real ones, or maybe I get all three real ones, or all four of them are real, or all five of them are real, or uh, six of them are real. Let me fix that. That equals 100%. Would you agree with that? So these are all of my options, ooh, and zero. I could pick zero of them to be real, right? Oh, six diamonds are picked from a bag. There's only five fake ones. Okay, no, so I have to have at least one of them that's real. It could maybe be all six, um, but guaranteed one of them are real because I only have five fakes, right? So I could pick out all five fakes, but I'd still have to have a real one. Oh, yeah, because I'm picking five of them out of the bag. Okay, I feel confident with that. So I can't have zero real ones because there just aren't enough fakes. So all of these are my total options. So that all equals 100%. It is guaranteed that this situation happens. So I'm going to subtract over the probability of getting five of them and the probability of getting all six of them. 
And then you'll see that we end up with this statement up here, probability of getting one, two, three, and four equals 100%. Uh, so all of the world minus the probability of getting all five, or sorry, five of them that are real, or all of them being real. So I am just going to stick with this top formula here. So I'm going to not clear everything. I'm going to erase all of this other stuff now. I love this drawing tablet. I know you guys might not care so much, but this has made a massive difference in my online education due to COVID-19. Okay, so we are here. What, I'm gonna do this one again, because this side is shorter. This side has four things. This side only has two things that are actually complicated. So I have 100% minus. What's the probability of getting five of them correct? Or five of them to be real? So I have six real ones. I have to choose five of them times. I have uh, five fakes and I have to choose one of them. So I have a total of six diamonds that I've picked. And that is over. I have 11 diamonds and I have to choose six of them. Then I'm going to switch colors. Then I'm going to subtract. I still have six real ones. Let's say that I choose all six of them to be real. Six diamonds, choose all six of them. There are five fakes. I'm going to choose zero of them. Remember, there's only one way for me to do that. I'm going to divide by my 11 diamonds and choosing six of them. All of this is going to give me my final answer. Nice thing is I can do some common denominators here, right? So this is the same as one minus six choosing five times five choosing one minus six choosing six times five choosing zero all over 11 choosing six. So be careful with this negative. That negative actually applies just to this numerator and that now becomes addition. So I do that just to try and not confuse you on some things. I don't wanna double negate anything. All right, and that folks is everything. I hope this was helpful and uh, I hope you guys learned something from this and uh, if you do, please like the video that's down below. And uh, hopefully, um, right now I'm at I'm at home doing all this teaching because of the it's SARS COVID nineteen two, or no SARS COVID two is what it's officially called, or Corona novel coronavirus or uh, COVID nineteen. So that's why I'm at home. But hopefully, you guys are also learning some stuff. If you have any questions, you're one of my students, please email me. And if you're not one of my students, leave a comment below and I'll try and answer that as quickly as I can and as in depth as I can. But if you like this video, click that like button, subscribe to the channel so that I know that the people are actually interested in seeing this. And I hope all of you have a phenomenal rest of your day. Uh, be careful, be safe, and do things carefully and with enthusiasm. Bye everybody.